Hey guys, this is Ryan with Artisan Armory. Uh, before I ever used to make swords and knives, I had a scrapyard for about eight, eight or nine years. I was going to show you some uh, things that I've learned over the years to help you get the most money uh, for your scrap metal. Uh, for these hard times that we're going through, some of us may need to pick up some extra money here in the next month or two. I'm going to show you a few simple techniques to tell the difference between 304 stainless and 316 stainless and we'll talk a little bit about other alloys as well. What I have here first is not stainless steel. Uh, one of these, uh, well two of them are zinc coated and you have the stainless steel which you can tell the difference. Here's the stainless steel here's the galvanized they have a little bit different color and they don't have that polished look that stainless has and uh, anytime you're getting into scrap metal you should always carry a magnet with you because aluminum and stainless that does not have a magnetic pull and a zinc coated iron which does have a pull to it one more way to tell the difference between stainless and aluminum is that aluminum ha usually has a little bit lighter of a polish on it. It doesn't have the polish that stainless steel does have. Um, it can though, so it can be deceiving at times. But there's a couple different ways you can tell. First of all is the sound that aluminum makes compared to stainless steel. Whereas the hard stainless has more of a hard sound because, well, it's a harder metal. Uh, another way to tell is of course stainless steel is going to spark orange whereas aluminum will not spark at all. Uh, one more way you can tell is if you've got a knife on you. And aluminum, this knife's going to go straight into it. See how it's peeling away at it? Yeah, stainless, it's going to slide right off the stainless. Now, some of these doorknobs can be deceiving because they look exactly like stainless steel. but they don't spark so if it doesn't put out a spark at all it's not stainless these are going to be an alloy of zinc zinc alloys are made up uh, they call it pot metal all sorts of different things right here we have a 400 series stainless so the 400 series is quite easy to tell they look the same but a magnet definitely sticks to them enough to pick them up many times and the 300 series are not that way Okay, so now that you know the difference between what's stainless and what's not, and what has value and what doesn't, let's learn the different types of stainless and the type of value that's in the different types of stainless. So 304 is going to be your most common stainless. It's also sometimes marked as 818 stainless steel, and all these numbers have a various meaning. It's 8% nickel that's going to be in your 304 stainless, and the 18 represent how much chromium that they put in the composition of your stainless steel, your household stainlesses, so forth. Uh, forks, knives, spoons, things like that, they're most likely going to be made out of 400 series stainless, which is not going to have any nickel in it whatsoever. Uh, so they're not going to bring you any more money uh, than regular steel or shreddable metal. Now your 316 stainless is more industrial it's going to bring you more money because it's going to have more metal in the composition, more valuable metals like the presence of molybdenum. Ugh, I can't hardly say that. Molybdenum, which is short for molly. How can you tell the difference between 304 and 316? Well, 304 is not going to have much of a pull to it whatsoever. It is going to have some. 316 will have a little bit more of a pull to your magnet. It's going to be a little more attracted to it. It's not going to be enough to pick it up like say the 400 series. 304 or 818 stainless will always spark orange. It's going to be like say this house ladle. They're not going to make it out of 316 stainless because it's too expensive to make household items out of an expensive stainless like 316 with the presence of molybdenum how can you tell the difference well first of all a lot of them are marked and if they're not marked I'll show you another test on how to tell the difference by doing the spark test you can see this is clearly marked 316 
or CF8M. It's the same thing right there. CF3M, which is also 316 stainless, but it has a 3 there instead of an 8 because it's only got 0.03% carbon content, whereas CF8M is going to have 0.08% carbon content in this 316 alloy. So one is a low carbon 316 stainless and one's a higher carbon for more tensile strength in that stainless but as far as price is concerned you're going to get the same price uh, depending on whether it's low carbon or high carbon 316 stainless so that shouldn't make a difference to you however you do want to know the difference between some alloys which are stainless type based I say stainless based but really they're nickel based alloys which is also the same as stainless steels uh, alloys that can bring you a lot more money like Inconel X750 it's gonna bring you a few bucks uh, the last time I sold this I've got three or four dollars for it in the past I'm not making that today because of the price of nickel uh, Hasteloy C I used to get fifteen dollars pound for it but I don't know what it's going for today because of the presence of so much molybdenum that's in it but it also has cobalt and tungsten in it as well uh, which helps drive the price up of this alloy. Some people say, or I've read before, that 304 is a better stainless steel for heat uses than 316, but that's simply not true. I've used a 316 crucible right here, a 316 crucible over 40 times for my forge casting bronze, and I've never had a problem with 316 and I may get another, I don't know, a hundred uses out of it. I, I'll let you know if I ever find out. But this stuff holds up really well where when I use a 304 stainless as a crucible two, maybe three times before the, uh, the burner will burn a hole straight through it and then my bronze starts pouring all over the bottom of my smelter and it's not good. I don't like it because then I have to get in there with a chisel and dig out that bronze. Nobody likes doing that. You can use an angle grinder for testing these metals to spark test them. Uh, just remember a pad that you have on your angle grinder is going to help determine what kind of spark it's putting off. The softer pads on them is not going to put out and give you the identification uh, such as a, a harder grinding bit uh, made out of stone or something else will show you the spark better and give you a better idea of what kind of metal you're dealing with if you don't have um, this thing here which I can't remember the name of this tool right here if you don't have one you can use one of those so let's do it if your red sparks outweigh your orange sparks Chances are you've got 316 stainless, even if it's not marked and you can't tell. But if your orange sparks outweigh your red sparks, and you don't see a small stream of red sparks like you would see with the 316, most likely you're dealing with 304 stainless. And of course if it's a house ladle or something of that nature, it's definitely going to be a 304 stainless, if not a lower quality stainless. Now, just because I like the way it looks when it sparks, I'll show you real quick what this half nim looks like when I spark it. Oh yeah, see how bright that is? Uh. Yeah, this is a pretty neat little metal. Um, this is about $400 uh, for this little piece that weighs a little over a pound. So super expensive metal. It's pretty neat. Uh, I don't have a lot of half nim. I don't get a lot of it when I was doing the scrap yard every day. But definitely look out for certain alloys uh, other than your stainless steels by sparking them. Because you won't know unless you test them.